this is an overview that you want to pay attention to uh, when you're dealing with uh, anemia. All we're, doing, all we're doing here is the overview. And what we will do later on is then divide and dive into each one of these uh, categories of different types of anemias. Is that clear? So, for example, under microcytic anemia, which we will uh, take on at first, first and foremost, you pay attention to MCV being less than 80. And under microcytic anemia, we will then walk through the differentials that you see here. And these include your iron deficiency, anemia, chronic disease, sideroblastic, and also your um, um, thalassemias. And I will tell you how to approach this when the time is right, because really <clears throat> what you're doing here is hemoglobin. And so therefore you divide for pathologic purposes to make your life easier with diseases. You'll divide into heme and globin. Do that for me and you'll be in good shape. And when we deal with heme, there are a lot of things that we need to talk about there with biochemistry. Biochemistry, you should be thinking about the porphyria pathway. And if you're not familiar with it, perhaps it would be a good time for you to take a look at the porphyria pathway with heme synthesis, whereas your globin would then be the genes. You don't have control over genes. That's something that you're given. And we'll talk about the alpha, beta, gamma, and delta and such. Under, under macrocytic, uh, really, uh, under macrocytic, we'll divide this into megalblastic and non-megalblastic, and that becomes really important for us. Uh, so, for example, the megalblastics here that are um, often tested are right, folate deficiency and vitamin B12 deficiency. There are a couple others that we have to address as well under megalblastic and those include your bli diamond black fan anemia, and then you also have erotic aciduria. All right? So those are things that uh, are, are, have shown up, are showing up, and will show up. And uh, stick with me here, and I'll, I'll, I will constantly feed you current information, constantly. But what I'm saying is, Dr. Raj, I thought megalblastic was always macrocytic. That is true, okay? But the macrocytic do always doesn't have to be megalblastic, really. I thought they were interchangeable. No, they're not. Und please pay attention. So you can have macrocytic megalblastic or you can have macrocytic non-megalblastic. Is that clear? So what's the difference? The difference is the following. What you're measuring here with macrocytic is going to be, for the most part, the size of that RBC in serum. Is that clear? That to you means circulation. So therefore, if you're thinking about folate and B12 deficiency, then don't you need that for proper DNA synthesis, either, either pyrimidine or purine? Sure. So if you don't have proper folate and B12 available, how in the world can you properly form normal RBCs? You cannot. Not only can you not form proper RBCs, you have many, 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 many other issues, including your WBCs and such as well. Would you please tell me what an immature cell is called in your bone marrow? Oh, I see what you're getting at. That's a blast, isn't it? There you go. So whenever you have a blast... This to you should mean uh, that you have a problem in the bone marrow. Is that clear? Whereas if you take a look at the category of non-megoblastic, it's still macrocytic. So what does that mean? MCV greater than 100. Now you can be more technical in terms of dividing megoblastic and non-megoblastic with 110 femtoliters, but that's a bit much right now. But under non-megoblastic though, this would mean that from the bone marrow, there was no problem. Not B12, not folate deficiency. Under non-megoblastic, you have things like liver disease, alcoholism, and reticulocytosis. All right? So those are things that I will mention, but in terms of going into detail, if I were you, I'd be paying attention to alcohol. Alcohol does a lot of things. Dr. Raj, I thought alcohol would then consume your folate. Yes, it does. <laughs> so be smart, though. So if your alcoholic has megoblastic anemia, it most likely was due to, there you go, folate deficiency. See what I'm getting at? What else could um, alcohol do? We'll talk, we'll talk, we'll talk. Alcohol could also result in a very common form of acquired type of sideroblastic anemia. Hmm. And what's sideroblastic anemia? Take a look. Microcytic. You see this. Okay, so these are things that all we're doing here, setting up an overview. I am spending a little bit of time here so that you keep these arms and branches of your anemias all, well, organized, shall we say. Okay. Then what do we do? Well, I'll divide our normocytics. The normocytics are going to be the largest of um, all of the anemias. So be careful. Just because you find an MCV, take a look, between 80 and 100, all it does is put you in the category of anemia, normocytic specifically. And your patient is going to, what, come with fatigue and tiredness, right? That's all he or she knows. And then you will then take the proper history, and then you'll figure out. And the way that you want to do this, ladies and gentlemen, all I'm doing here is setting up 
the organization pattern is divided into non-hemolytic and hemolytic. So I would like for you to take a look at the category in the far left here. And those are all non-hemolytics. What does that mean? Uh, for the most part, as a rule of thumb, for example, let's say that you have uh, a patient has parvovirus B19. Reflex, you're thinking aplastic anemia, correct? Uh, maybe your patient is taking chloramphenicol. Maybe your patient is receiving chemotherapy. Maybe, maybe the kidneys got damaged. What does all, all these have in common? Kidneys got damaged, no erythropoietin, mm, no erythropoiesis. Oh, okay. Next, chemotherapy, bone marrow shutdown, suppression. Oh, no bone marrow function. Okay. Parvirus B19, it hits the bone marrow. What happens? A plastic. Okay. Y you see my point. If you're never able to properly form your RBCs from the bone marrow, how in the world can you possibly destroy them? You cannot. <laughs> so therefore, these are non-hemolytic. Are we clear? Now, you tell me where the gravesite is for an RBC. The gravesite for an RBC. Good. The spleen. And so therefore, all the two categories that you see here, the one in the middle and the one on the right for you, those are all hemolytics. And we walk through all of these in detail. So all of these will at some point then end up at the spleen or maybe even perhaps intravascular, but guaranteed there's going to be destruction of that RBC because there was no problem with the bone marrow. Hence, we call it hemolytic anemia. Before I move on, there is one other concept that I have to introduce now, and then we'll go into uh, greater detail when the time is right. And that is going to be what's known as, well, current day practice called reticulocyte production index or RPI. It's a concept that you want to know and really it comes down to what's known as corrected reticulocytes. And luckily now there's uh, calculations and such. You can just plug it into your computer app or whatever. And it will tell you the proper RPI. But before you go here, though, you must understand what's happening. Let me ask you something. If the bone marrow, which is the first column or first category, normocytic here, has been shut down, I'm not able to produce any RBCs, right? So if you're not able to produce uh, any RBCs, were you able to produce any type of uh, reticulocytes? What is a reticulocyte? Well, well, we'll go into detail about reticulocyte. It's the fact that it's an immature RBC. But point is this. If your bone marrow has been shut down, there's no way that you can produce any reticulocyte. So what do you expect your RPI or corrected reticulocyte count to be? Know the concept first. Decreased. Good? So here you're thinking less than 3%. Whereas, whoo, the RBCs are being destroyed in mass by the spleen or intravascular. So now what happens? Bone marrow has to churn, 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 right? It's put into overdrive, overdrive. And what are you churning out? The bone marrow is spitting out reticulocytes, clear? So therefore you'd expect there to be an increase in reticulocytes. We call this greater. We mean actual value greater than 3%, and that'll be for any hemolytic. So now, the, well, you ask more questions later on, but understand the concept. So here's a nice little overview. Not to worry. Obviously, we're going to repeat, 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 repeat everything that I said, but hopefully you have now developed a proper organization pattern. You just completed your first video of the world's best medical exam preparation. Lecturio brings the knowledge of worldwide leading medical experts and teaching award winners to your PC, tablet, or smartphone. Prepare yourself and check your progress with thousands of quiz questions customized to U.S. MLE standards. And the very best, you can get in touch with our medical experts personally. Visit Lecturio.com now and continue with the most inspiring medical education around the globe, anytime, anywhere.